Hello and welcome to this psychology topic video where we're going to look at how to write a model answer for the A-level sample assessment material set 1, paper 3 question 11 which is an essay question on evolutionary explanations for relationships. So here's the question, it says discuss evolutionary explanations for partner preference uh, and you can see already on the screen I've started to map out what I would put into this particular essay. So I said for my AO1, I want to make sure I'm including the key ideas of sexual selection and also distinguishing between inter and intrasexual selection, which I think is important. In terms of my AO3 points, I, I'd probably draw on the, the bus study, the famous bus study, which demonstrates the universality of some partner preferences uh, and how that supports the idea of an evolutionary explanation. I'm also going to use Clark and Hatfield's very famous study as well as further support for the idea of evolutionary explanations, but I am going to add in a methodological criticism within that in terms of the Western sample they've used and the ideas of cultural bias. Uh, and then third and finally, I put the word ignores there, but I'm going to uh, mention the idea that actually evolutionary ex explanations tend to overlook social and cultural influences, and I'm going to draw on some research support for that. So let's look at what a model answer might look like, starting with our A1. And this is quite a tricky essay question because there is a lot of specialist terminology that is quite difficult to always understand fully. Uh, but we need to make sure we're showing off to the examiner that we know this uh, this terminology, key terminology within the evolutionary explanation. And more importantly, we know how to use it, ideally with some examples. So here's, here's an outline I wrote earlier. So I said evolutionary explanations uh, or approaches explain human behaviour in terms of adaptiveness and reproductive success. In relation to partner preference, now that second line is important because I'm already making sure I'm not just calling it relationships, I'm acknowledging the exact question which actually said discuss the explanation for partner preferences. So the second sentence says in relation to partner preference, a particular behavioural characteristic that might help to attract a mate and have healthy offspring is known as sexual selection. Sexual selection can also explain the differences between males and females' partner preferences. For example, it's been suggested that males uh, universally prefer younger women with an hourglass figure, as these characteristics indicate fertility. Similarly, it's been suggested that females prefer males with resources, as such men would provide safety and security for any potential offspring. So there's a nice general outline about the ideas of sexual selection, plus some partner preferences. I'm now going to go in a bit more depth. To further understand human reproductive behaviour, evolutionary theories attempt to explain uh, selection behaviours through inter- and intrasexual selection. Intersexual selection is sometimes referred to as female choice because it is based on the idea that due to the greater investment of time, energy and resources used to raise a child, females need to be more careful, selective or choosy when selecting a potential partner. So that's the female side. Intrasexual selection, on the other hand, is the preferred male strategy. And this refers to evolutionary developed features that allow a male to complete, compete with other males for female uh, mates. Okay? The winner of this competition therefore reproduces and passes on the genes that have contributed to his success, which is why we see these behaviours or characteristics today, uh, because the winning male has passed his genes on. Okay? So those features still get passed on. That becomes your outline. It's slightly over 150 words, but we have made sure that we've incorporated all of these key specialist terminology on there and demonstrated a good knowledge of evolutionary approaches okay now let's consider our evaluation and we're going to start with a simple yet effective evaluation paragraph crafted around the bus study so you might say that there is research to support the claim that certain partner preferences are evolutionary bus surveyed 10,000 adults in 33 countries and found that females universally place more importance on resource related characteristics in a partner such as good financial prospects males however preferred younger mates and put more value on signs of females ability to reproduce such as attractiveness and modesty okay this universality is what indicates that partner preferences might be an evolved response to ensure survival and healthy reproduction so there's our first evaluation paragraph simple yet effective for our second one, we're going to have a slightly more in-depth paragraph where I'm actually going to criticise the sample of Clark and Hatfield's research uh, and comment on why that's a problem uh, for these evolutionary theories. Okay, So you might say there is additional research to support the idea that females are more careful when selecting a partner. For example, female choosiness was illustrated by Clark and Hatfield in 89. They asked male and female student volunteers to approach opposite uh, sex student individuals on a university campus, asking them the same question. I've noticed you around campus. I find you very attractive. Uh, will you go to bed with me tonight? And they found marked gender differences in the responses. 75% of male students agreed. However, not a single female said yes. So we could conclude at this point and say this further supports the evolutionary theories and the idea of female selectiveness, but I'm not going to. I'm going to counter-criticise here. 
And I'm going to say, however, Clark and Hatfield's study, like many others in the relationships topic, are criticised for their narrow sample that might not represent all types of relationships. For example, Clark and Hatfield's study was conducted on undergraduate students as these women were expected to achieve, high, uh, achieve a high educational status leading to a secure income for themselves and therefore their preference for a high status man might actually stem from similar interests and prospects rather than the search for a resourceful mate as evolutionary theories might predict. Okay? Consequently, we're unable to conclude whether a non-student older sample would be as selective and we don't know if evolutionary explanations explain part of preference in all females. Now what's important with that final sentence is I've made sure I've referred all of that now back to the idea of partner preference which was the key word in the in the question itself okay. So we've made sure we've linked the whole thing together. On to our third and our final evaluation point we're going to talk about the idea that they uh, these evolutionary theories tend to overlook social and cultural factors to a large extent. So we could say furthermore uh, evolutionary explanations downplay the role of social and cultural influences. Now I'm aware on the previous slide in my notes I put limited. Try and avoid words like uh, limited or ignore as I, I wrote and try and use phrases like they downplay or they overstate, things like that. Okay. For the past hundred years Western societies have experienced a significant change in terms of gender equality and women's independence. These changes uh, mean that women in the modern Western world may lo no longer be looking for a man to provide them with resources. Uh, for example Kester and Sharma found in their analysis of 37 countries that females mostly valued a mate with resources only in societies where women's access to education and workplaces were limited and that's quite a telling sign and this makes the evolutionary explanations limited as they only explain human mate choice in terms of evolutionary adaptiveness uh, overlooking other important factors, factors such as cultural and social norms. Okay. Let me pop the entire essay on the screen for you there and you can see that the first two paragraphs in the black font uh, are our A1, our knowledge, and then the three evaluation paragraphs are those in blue that follow. What I've also done is I've included in orange uh, an additional evaluation point just to show you how we can craft an evaluation point purely out of our issues and our debates alone. So if we take a look at that final one, you wouldn't need to have included this as well in the essay, but it's a nice extra one or to use instead of an additional point. You'll see there that I've wrote evolutionary explanations of relationships suffer from what's called evolutionary reductionism. So there's a new term for you. As they argue that the strategies for choosing a mate are the result of genetic inheritance and striving for reproductive success. However, this is not always as straightforward in real life where individual differences in partner's choice may play a huge role. For example, evolutionary explanations fail to account for homosexual relationships where choice of partner clearly does not result in reproductive success and has no evolutionary advantage. So you can see how I've created a whole evaluation paragraph based purely on an example and our issues and debates okay so you can pause the screen there and take a look at the essay one last time but again i hope you found that video useful for more uh, videos live videos or webinars do sign up to the tutor to you site.net forward slash psychology forward slash events any questions uh, please don't hesitate to ask us on twitter or via our facebook group and thank you once again for watching bye bye now